So hello and welcome to episode 32 of Nightmare Down Under, the Gear City Let's Play, where we play Down Under in Australia on Nightmare Difficulty. We started in 1900, now it, it is January 1969, and I think it's a good time to take stock of what happened. Uh, so we have uh, gotten a new real competitor in the last episode, so the company NOA, who bought out Hopesy with their sole roadster, and now that we have another a full competitor on the market and they're also selling selling a couple couple things so it's worth checking what the market looks like uh, since the last episode we also finished uh, all the uh, research work on our racing stuff uh, but that, that doesn't mean that that's the only thing we have to do so it's also worth to do some more long-term planning now so we are the only seller of a compact car no compact SUV compact van is something I think no one wants. No coupe. So there is a hole in the market. Two two plus twos. Our Wallaroo is holding its own, although they look pretty adept at selling, so it's more expensive, it's worse, and it's selling more. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe they're doing more marketing or whatever. Um, but at least it's uh, on, on equal equal footing. Well, that's that's good enough. Uh, so we've now brought our new emu uh, uh, overhauled emu B uh, to the market. That's why it sells nothing. They have a fastback. We have a full-size sedan, no hatchback. How many people want hatchbacks in Australia? Not that many. 1.6. So not uh, of much consequence. They have Land Lays and no limousine. They have luxury sedan market. They actually sell pretty nice. Lee, so okay. They have a micro car which doesn't sell. Micro van, they have a minivan, they have a Phaeton. We have a pickup truck and the D is our diesel version, which we had unsuccessfully used to get an army contract for somewhere. They have a roadster and a two plus two roadster. No SUV. They have a sedan, we have a sedan, and same... Wow. Theirs is much more expensive and sells much better. So what we should do here, and probably similar to the 2 plus 2 maybe, is bring a second trim to the market. So that we have two trims against their one. No shooting brake. They have a sports car. But that's insanely expensive. And we're going to get a new one anyway. No station wagon? How many people want station wagons? That's reasonably popular. So that's something we can we can check. They have a subcompact, no supercar. They have a touring, town cars, and vans. So coupe is a market uh, open spot in the market. And station wagon. All right, so that's, I think, not too uninteresting to know. So how large are they? 367,000, not that large, actually. They have some nice cash reserves. So they are half the size we are, but they are selling better. So what we want to do and need to do, what the plan is in terms of racing, is that, so we entered already our engine into the Australian Formula 3. We're going to enter a compact car with the same 2 litre V6 racing tuned compact car. So we have to... That's probably something where can, we can roll two into one that uh, we redo our compact car on a new platform because I think it's now the oldest one that we have because we're now starting over with the short wheelbase stuff, I think. And then make sure the V6 fits, and then we have two versions, so one regular compact car and then the uh, rally version. And we're also going to enter into some of the sports car stuff. So here I think yeah, this is the ins Insane Engines, so that's not, not the sports series, but either the Grand Turning series, where we have a few engines no, that's done a chance against us. And the turning championship, which instantly has some sports cars. Here we have less less chance. 
So there we wouldn't really be compared. So it's for the unlimited one, interestingly. And it's also the cheapest, so that's another argument. And that's what we are building our sports car for, or rather two sports cars. So one regular and the other one racing, although with the current market, what could also be a thing that we say? We use the sports car only for the racing version and then have the same body as the coupe, although that this would require engineering two cars where otherwise it's just a trim. No, I think I'm, I'm sticking to the original plan, just uh, having two variants of the same sports car. So let's start doing that. So that's then essentially a new generation of our oldest car, the sports car, which is now severely outdated, but not for long. So that's a racing platform. So we start with the um, tame version. I'm not sure, not sure we need this expensive gearbox because the other one, the other ones are saner. So this would this gearbox work? That's the fuel efficient one, but that doesn't really matter. Three speed with an overdrive. Yeah, that's optimal actually. So that's neat. So then we keep this this uh, established gearbox. So car body. So that's the sensible one. That's going to be this. That's something we, we checked before. Is there anything new here? No. And the racing version will be then the Coopster. Same body, just uh, yeah, a bit more race, race stuff oriented. So that's the base sports car. I think still very credible performance. Top speed 180. So performance can... it's expensive enough in terms of material cost, so... and the rating is good enough too. So 53. Yeah, some reliability testing isn't the worst thing to do. And otherwise, that's all they care about, and the overall rating is great already. Safety is awesome for some reasons, I'm not sure why, I didn't really pay any attention to that. Anyway, so... Yeah, this is, I think, the one of the easiest revamps to do. And for the race car, we don't really need anything more anyway. Market demographic doesn't do anything to our handling. It adds some performance, but it actually makes things better to an extent. It also makes things more expensive. So that's something we can maybe do for the racing version. So that this is the new Thylacine. Fifteen months. Can we be finished in time for the new season? That's probably pretty expensive. Four eight. Six zero. One million so that we're definitely in time for the new season. I think that's that's useful. So thirteen months, six million, new sports car. Pretty good stats. And the additional trim. So that gets the racing engine and the racing gearbox, and that's uh, then the track version. So let's say the T, T for track. Let's design it. Same body, just souped up. This is just well. Let's give them. Let's give them wing mirrors, shall we? So that's this one. 61, yeah, so the engine uh, definitely uh, changed. So top speed 252, 6.9 seconds, 0 to 100. Red line 9000. That works. So that's then. Does this affect weight actually? 924? Nope. Because this will be insanely expensive on the market. Performance to the max. 
So reliability... I'm not sure this is taking into account. But we're sort of at a certain limit anyway. Market demographic. Better scores. Does this translate to better values here? So 6.8. Six point eight seven is the same. How about lateral G's one point four? One four zero. No, that doesn't seem to change anything here. But let's just simulate we ask 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 some racing drivers actually about it and they give some some suggestions what to do. Does quality add to things? That could be something to be worth checking. So 6.8 seconds. Breaking 36 meters. Six point eight eight two. That actually makes things worse because it's, I think heavier. So let's just check a few. So there's lowest performance, increased material quality, lowest performance, okay. Interior quality also. Coating quality, probably doesn't matter for a race car. Manufacturing techniques, they improve performance a little bit. I mean, that makes a difference. So 6.8 seconds, 1.4 aero. 6.80, that makes a difference a little bit. So then we take extra care in terms of manufacturing. So this also takes 30 months, this is great. So that's our race car, Thalassine T. So for our new compact car, which would be the next one in line anyway, yes, so that's the, the that's the old uh, so that's the old Thylacine chassis, and that's uh, the old compact car chassis. So the new compact car, we'll have to look like what it would look like, and we can start engineering the chassis, so that we then can, when that's done, build the new uh, two compact cars, one sane version and one insane version. So what would new compact car look like? Just to see the bodies. So this is more like a hatchback. This uh, has bad arrow, I'd suspect. The front end works, but the rear is a bit weird to this big C pillar. Not a fan. This is not compact, really. That's old, too. That's compact, yeah, that's very compact. Is there anything? Now this could be the rally car, it's even named like that. It's a body that has these side pods. So this is this the same body? So this is the compact. This almost looks like a middle rear engine. Yeah, I think this is just smaller but the same body, okay. This is this could be compact-ish, arguably. So here's another rally version of this compact. That's another hatchback. This is this. Yeah, that this was a uh, 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 Wallaroo. Here's another of these um, cars with these side pods. That's an odd one. This 
this could be another argument. If, if this is our sedan, this is the compact. Not very compact compact, but anyway. What's the interior size of the 622? It's pretty tiny. What would the other one be in terms of space? 6, 7. So it's, it's, it's a wash in terms of space. So either this one or this one, and that's then 2.4 meters. Because our sedan is 2.6 and this is then, if we look at this, maybe this is 2.4 meters. So that if that's the compact. And this could also be 2.4 meters, so that's, a, that's fine. But these are the same. These are higher. So something like, does this have, this has four doors, but that's maybe okay. The other thing we could check is with this one, whether we can actually make it rear engine or something to make, to have this have a, a reason for, for these. Let's just see. What, how bad this would be in terms of stats or this as a this is the third option for the compact S sort of same um, space so how many would be, so this could be the anyone without these uh, sc scoops on the hood Is this the same? This is the same. So maybe that's that's the compact without. And we just have normal cars. Yes. So that this is the compact. Or oh, this is the compact. So that would be the pointer. So also 2.4 conceivably. Yeah, that's. So that's something we can. Then we don't have to decide that yet. So 2.4. Is this smaller? Not really. I kind of like this as compact. Also like this as compact. Okay, in any case, it's then going to be a 2.4 meter wheelbase, unibody, wheel, slowly, always slightly skew it towards performance. So 2.4 meter, a bit wider maybe. Compact car, what do they want? And the engine has to fit. It does, nice. Easy, very easy actually. So they care about fuel economy, a little bit safety, dependability. I actually appreciate handling, okay. So if I go with rear engine rear wheel drive, performance drops and I'm having trouble with fitting the engine. At RMR is a bit better, but anyway, so that, yeah, front, front engine rear wheel drive, front mid engine rear wheel drive, better performance. And just a little tiny adjustment in engine length. So we actually uh, then have a bit of a more sporty compact. This is more expensive, not really. So then that's take this as the nudge towards making this a good rally car. So braking for performance. A bit more. Comfort shall be 52. So that is three and a half stars. Although we can do with a little, we're not sacrificing performance actually. Yeah, here we're adding just a lot of cost to, to this needlessly. So 
so maybe I'm not going for full breaking and not for full the uh, so to keep things or to keep cost a little bit under control. So performance up to three and a half stars is not easy at all. So then this adds the sort of compromise. 277 is pretty expensive, but our, our chassis cost 244 for the medium wheelbase. I think that in this case it's okay, because we want to have this uh, as a successful, hopefully successful rally car. So the engine fits, and the regular with the power, yeah, 240 is a bit insane. The other engine would be. Maybe the inline, uh, the the 1.6 liter that we just had developed for the base sedan. Optimal fuel consumption, perfect, 6.4 liters. Yeah, so that's the sane version, and this is the insane version. So we can reuse stuff at the same time. This looks a good platform for our rally car, compact rally car. So then let's build this. Completion date. So one, I don't think we would develop two cars at the same time, and the other advantage is uh, that uh, we can have some enhancements of the other parts. So we can make it 13 months till we get our new compact car platform, and the V6 fits. So then let's build this, and it's the 240, the third one. No, the sec second unibody for the, comp the second compact unibody. So one sh one car, one chassis, and let's uh, make another version, the trim of the kangaroo, so that we can squeeze our new competitors a little bit. We just finished the same V6, so let's put this also into the kangaroo. Gearbox. It's a bit of a pity that our two-speed automatic is a bit old. So would I develop a new automatic for a sedan trim? No. So let's just put it in here. And uh, so it's a two, two uh, LX. So we also can make it a bit more up trim. So. Same body, just a new trim, a bit more upscale, and it's for, I think we sell everything to middle class anyway. Let me make it, make it upper middle so that there is a distinction. Some more reliability, actually yes. Giving it better handling. More safety, yes, so that's something they like. More cargo. And some more quality. How can we get 50 as the lower range? This is genuinely more upscale. Still being a trim, yes, 50, perfect. Market demographic would make things not better, but not worse either. So then this one is the new luxury trim for our sedan so that we can um, compete with two trims against the one from our competitor. Okay, so that's the Kangaroo B 2.0 LX, seven months. We can't change the duration. And that's in plenty for us to do, so with some extra efforts uh, for racing stuff. And then after the Thylacine is done, we can then build it two new compact cars, one with a rally trim and one without, and that will give us plenty to do. One final check, since we're checking things. Pension funds. So it's now monthly pension payout half a million, that's insane. 
So I'm going to five times um, the liability, so that's 600, so hang on. That's going to be a bit of a drain on our coffers, but we have pretty well filled coffers at that. And Melbourne is also still redesigning, so let's see. So we put last time the new Wallaroo on the market. Did we actually check the news? No, we didn't. We didn't put it on the market. Anyway, let's just charge ahead. So more benefits. Can we shift more immediate benefits towards? No. So they want 60. So if these change, if, if the benefits change, that's something they don't care about at the moment. Okay, so contract's complete. So they have the racing engine for uh, Formula 3. Let's see how that works. So some new car bodies, including a compact car one, so that's worth checking out actually. So we're actually selling regular cars as well. Oh yeah, we put the new Emu B on the market. That was, that was what we did, and the estimation was actually pretty great. So, Philocene selling off reserves, this is fine. A few less flatbacks. Oh, next, next turn, maybe. A few less kangaroo bees. Rest looks good. So how is the new emu doing on the market? Yeah, so it's selling more than the other one, a little bit at least. Seven points, so let's check the racing report. So, Wallaroo is, I think, still fine. Yeah, some less flatbacks, 8,000 flatbacks. Three thousand thylacines, so that's stabilizing. So Melbourne is already full almost again. Oh yeah, let's check how our racing turns out. We can still, or we will be able to revamp the engine at some point, so there is uh, still room for improvement. So have a few last flatbacks again. They seem to be stabilizing. And a few last grand kangaroos. 
which is now probably also getting pretty old, but it has no competition, so that's fine. Three million cash flow, but I think the main bugbear here is the factory reconstruction. No, not research teams, although it's worth checking. Yeah, we're still getting the chassis skills. Racetrack. So results. Yeah, we're actually not, not last, but that's, that's, I think, pretty good. And... We are, of course, green in terms of experience, but everyone is green in terms of experience, except the Zesty and Window Sports. So I think that simply takes some time over time. And just our first season, so I think over time this will hopefully improve, better engine and more experience. So, car sales. Here everything is excellent. Some more Grand Kangaroos. So, three months we're getting our second sedan trim. More emus, 11, can't have more emus. Hmm. Less grand kangaroos, no. So don't, yeah, maybe the diesel doesn't make that much sense. Well, we can check the contracts, but more emus. And that's exactly what I need. A few more Wallaroos. Kangaroo B is fine and that will probably drop anyway. 5,000 Wombats. Still seen is good, so let's check some contracts. Since we have a reasonably good pickup truck and maybe, yeah, but they still want the diesel. Yeah, Auckland Taxi had this odd subcompact. No, they want an SUV. They will want SUVs. So that's something to, to take into account, maybe. Okay, some emu reserves are always good. So I guess we just continue our diesel pickup truck for the time being. We tried, but no one wants them. A few less wombats, that was just a bit of a blip. So, new sedan. So diesel is gone, farewell. Although I can put it back on the market with... Yeah, so Wombats are definitely fine. Wombats are dropping a bit, this, this competition. I'm just... Because it can't really be age, it's not that old yet. No, I mean, that probably just changes in the market. So emus are, I think, fine with this volume. It makes sense to have some reserves. Wallaroos are great. So much less kangaroo bees, but that's one something I need to do anyway. 
So, new LX. So, 2, 6 and 3, 4. So, here I'm, yeah, I'm selling above unit costs. So, here we have 4, 6 at the upper end. And here we have... Yeah, so we can actually have some more leeway. Although, I keep it, like to keep it below them. So, then I have to guess, of course, what to produce. So, the new one is much more popular. Then I have to reshuffle stuff in Melbourne. So, half this, so a bit less than half, so 2,000 of these. And 3,000. 2,000 and 3,500. Let's see what this does. Let's see what the press thinks about our new upscale Kangaroo LX. When we make a new automatic gearbox, and it'll probably be a 3-speed, uh, then we give this a facelift. So we took our best engineers and threw them on the Kangaroo B LX design. Will it outshine its competition? Functionally, it may on paper, but how does it work in the real world? First stop is on the track. It's scared. It's built for performance. Uh, yeah, so that's our V6 uh, engine that we just had happened to have handy. And uh, 151 newton meters of torque, smoking wheels. And it handles smoothly, can turn a corner. Interior was below average, so at least good that we invested something uh, into making it a bit more comfortable. They like the room. They like the overall quality. They love the dependability. Fuel economy is great. So our single overhead cam V6 engines seems to work really well. And it's impressive in terms of safety. So it's a really, really good car. So that hopefully takes a few sales off um the competition woodstock and i think moon landing either that was or will be soon in 1969 I, I forgot the exact month so let's see how it sells Wow, this sells like hotcakes. Okay, I can discontinue the diesel. Diesel pickup. I think that did the trick in terms of... So the Kangaroo B actually sold better than expected. So this still sells 3000. So then I'll shift when do I get the new factory in 16? Okay, good thing I have Brisbane. So, 3000 kangaroo bees. I still have a few reserves. So, can I make all of them in Brisbane? Probably can, 20 production lines. So that's 6500. Wow, that's all of Brisbane, making one car. So that, I think, was something sensible. And we are out of extra production space. Can I make a few less emus? But that's just going down from maximum production. So let's see how the sales look for sedans. Oh, they, they love the LX. They love the LX for the higher price. So their sales dropped from 1,200 to 1,000 and we just 
corner of the market with our top version, so that was a sensible thing to do. Otherwise, we get our new sports car in 5. Still, still missing sales. Wow. And also, we need more kangaroo bees because that also picked up. And more flatbacks. So that's awesome. All good problems to have. Flatbacks. 8 8. And more. Yeah, so all of Brisbane, just making the top version. And here I need 3,300. So unit costs are probably... I think they're, they're high in absolute terms, I think, due to wages, but everything is, is going up. So what we can probably check is whether we're still selling everything at a profit. So this new kangaroo... Wow. That's... We overtook them as well. But it makes profit, so it's fine. Let's win on price. We are above unit costs here. We're above unit costs here. Here. Grand Kangaroo, yes. Wombat B. Could be a bit higher. And Sports Car as well. Okay. And our cash flow 20 million thing also speaks for itself. Moon Landing? Uh, probably, probably missed it. New sports car in three, but it's easy to sunset. So some... Less, wom less wombats. Less grand kangaroos, 9,000. And we can build slowly, reduce reserves. 8.5 flatbacks. 2.8 kangaroo B, uh, base kangaroos. And LX kangaroos is fine, so let's. Yeah, so they are slightly recovering, but they can't really do anything simply because they are so expensive. Okay, kangaroo sales dropped a bit. They maybe just adjusted things so everyone who has one, uh, oh, who really wanted one, has one. So 6,000 kangaroo LX, some relief for Brisbane. More wallaroos. Less kangaroo bees, 2-5. More flat, way more flat packs. So new sports car in 2. 
contract requests, I'm not checking it for one. So a couple of best cars, new racing series, Formula 3000, the 24 hours of Nürburgring, first year, some more competition. So that's all six liters, which we don't have. And Formula 4000 is four liters. So current results, and we have fifth. That's not too bad. And we can then update our engine probably in two years when we had a, a little bit of production and racing experience also. Five, four kangaroo LXs. Nine five emus. Rest with a dip in flatbacks. Maybe that's age, so seven thousand. And let's check the market. Pickup truck? No. This is probably just age, 1964. Can we get an H penalty? A little bit, yeah. So, so let's see in sunset. So, 1,800. So lots of stuff is finished, research complete, yearly sales, let's check the stats, can make a better electric car if we wanted to. So thylacines are all gone, perfect, less emus, 9000. Again, less flatbacks. Yeah, so that's probably now due for a bit of an overhaul. Final one before we re-engineer the platform. Let's let's put our thylacine, both thylacines, on sale. So one for why not four thousand? And the other one, the track version, this is still pretty cheap. So this looks more like it. And let's put it more importantly on the racetrack. So it's the, which one was it? I think the unlimited one. Australian Manufacturing League, compact car, 2000cc, nice. So then we have a, another good reason to put our compact car, uh, or put, put the racing V6 into a compact car. So I think this one, so we currently have, at least we can win against one, two, three, four, yeah. So then this is our track car. And we can invest something in here. Series focus. So new team growth slowly, target team size large. And we focus a bit more on development now. And here, so we can focus more on development. 
I think the investment is fine. Yep, so we're going to produce... Yeah, we have to put them into production anyway. And so this goes into Melbourne. And the Thylacine also goes into Melbourne anyway. So, no good idea about realistic numbers. So this one goes away for a much more expensive sports car now. So this was 2,700. So maybe produce 2,700. And for the track version, thousand. And then let's see what happens. So now it's time have a new compact car and give a flat back a final makeover, which is among the oldest car that we have. The Grand Kangaroo is now even more ancient, but it sells well, so why not? So pickup truck. Yeah, that's, I'm simply using the same same engines all over again. I'm not doing anything, just giving it a quick uh, improvement. Same body and all. And a bit more reliability, eight months. Uh, can probably do it in six. That's fine, that's our small team. And then our um, large team. Yeah, we can end production of the old Thylacine, thank you. And then our large team produces a new Wombat on the new platform. First, the same version here, we use the sedan engine, the base engine, and also then the sedan gearbox. Three-speed manual with overdrive. Fuel consumption is optimal, perfect. So car bodies. So we had, this is more of a coupe. So either this, but I'm sort of against the um, side openings. So this, so this pointer, not that compact, compact, but it's smaller than the sedan and it's not coupe-like. It's not a hatchback. Is this the pointer? It's a bit higher. Could be. Difficult to make out. This is not compact. This is a hatchback. Yeah, we had to use this as a coupe. This is our sedan, so this is the com. I think if this is our sedan, then this is our compact. And we get two different front versions of it. So yeah, let's use this as the basic compact. And then what would be the rally version? That's of course the other question. So something souped up in this four door style. Anything here? Nope. Is is this the so pucher and pointer is similar? Is this the same body? No, there's two door and four door. I have more of the same, I think. So the Belmo pan and the I think these are not the same. They're sort of the same. And here we have yeah, then this is the rally version maybe with the insane rear wing, just because. So then we maybe go with this instead. So this is the base version and this is the rally version. 
or the Odima. I think this is, this is more identical. Okay, so this is the compact. If this is the sedan, yeah, this is bigger. Okay, so that's the compact. And then here is the Supta Rally version. Okay. Wow, that's a really good value for a compact. So, getting a bit more cheap in stuff. Yes, yeah, so they like safety, but scores don't change. Dependability, okay, 56. Utility, 45 overall. Performance, probably good enough anyway. Because the chassis is very, very performance oriented. Okay, safety 57, fine. So material quality, not really. I think this is expensive enough and cheap enough as well. So 6.4 liters fuel consumption, top speed 162. Uh, Acceleration maybe a bit on the low side, but I think that's the price for the fuel economy. And yeah, so that's our basic compact. So it's the Wombat C. 17 months, no. I think, yeah, let's go a bit, no, we can use this as the introductory uh, season next time around, and we're going to race it uh, both as a touring car and as a rally car. So 16 months, 4.7, 15 months, 5.7, so 16 months I think is okay. And then we use the second half of next year as the intro um, season to both championships. And then we have after, after, afterwards the first proper season. So no, no need to rush things too much. So that's the Wombat C. Additional trim. Yes, please. New trim. Racing engine. Racing gearbox. And so again, that's the track. Uh, version, the 2.0 track, and the other one I should have named 1.6, um, so I can probably rename that, but not now. So it's a worse value as to be expected, so that's the the look, so here maximum performance. And we can, because these, yeah, save less safety, more performance. Does cargo focus impede anything? No, really. So we keep it as it is. Yeah, performance is maximum. Market demographic doesn't affect uh, performance. Technology doesn't affect things. Manufacturing techniques affect performance, so let's give them a few one better in manufacturing techniques. And yeah, let's keep them dependable. So 200, top speed 250, acceleration 7.1 seconds, 0 to 100, that's a pocket rocket. And so that's the Wombat C. 2 liter T. Let's rename. I can't rename it. That's a bit of, bit of a bummer. Nope. View vehicle. So I can rename components but not cars. Okay. Have to live with it. So one compact car that's very sensible and the other compact car that's uh, not that sensible but that's the idea. So that's that. Then let's see um, 
what the press thinks about our sports car. First, the mass market version. It's an underperformer. So with the 131 engine, it's a lackluster combination. They don't like to talk either, but they love the handling. The cabin reminds me of that elderly grandparent who saved up just enough money to furnish the living room with those big comfortable couches. Interior is very comfortable. Seats are new perfect. It's not roomy. A few build floors, but not much. It's dependable. Impressive fuel economy. And it's very safe. So how about the track version? The more unhinged one. Have we made one of our best sports with the new Thylacine T? Speed Demon, yes, it will be forever enshrined in the Hall of Performance fame. Kids will dream of this car with posters on the walls, and year from now, the sports will appreciate in value. You should be fearful, though. With uh, 252 kilometers per hour, you'll be addicted to the action. The blazing 6.8 seconds to 100. And they like the torque as well. And they also like the handling, average interior, not overly impressed by cargo capacity, serious effort goes into every car produced. It's one of the more reliable vehicles on the market. You'll be th never be thought of an ecomaniac. Um, it's a subpar 11 liters, the gas station clerk is a nice guy. And a serious aspect, and it's also safe, um, so that aspect worked really well. I have no idea how, how it would sell, but there is only one way to find out. Before that, however, again, I'm going to check uh, sales. So, top three top sellers, Emu, Grand Kangaroo and Flatback. And the Emu makes it even well onto the first page. Awesome. How about all time sales? Grand Kangaroo, 783,000 in one generation. That happens when you don't have competition, so it's top 10, no, top, top 12 or something. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's actually it is top ten. Fantastic. And yeah, it's nine years old. No facelift since uh, since then. But, um, that's what everyone wants to buy it, and it's the largest car on the first page, actually. So that speaks another uh, thing. So how is NOA doing? They're doing very well. 526,000 sales, so they're, they've grown, they're now in our league, but we have some nice profits. Couple of manufacturers making big losses, and I'm not sure whether what this, what this is, because they didn't buy a mark. So this could be more folks getting out of business. Others making great profits, including the big ones. 2.1 million. That's the biggest one again. Who's running out of cash? A couple. So that's the more consolidation. Are we the largest independent by any chance? Yes, we are. We are a large independent, so we overtook Motocar. And yeah, NOA is here in the same league. So that bodes well. That's just one more quick thing. Yeah, so we see the little bit of a dip in terms uh, of profits here due to the competition, but uh, not, not that much. So we put things onto the racetrack, right? Right, the Grand Turning Series. Let's see how that plays out. What we can always do, and might do then... Um, at the end of next year is give the engine a makeover after having some experience and then all the cars get uh, a facelift and then they have an even more powerful engine and then we'll be probably well set for racing throughout the 70s wow that's demand that works so contracts complete so they have new racing stuff algorithm 3 no points. New technologies, so that's the new electric stuff. So let's consider all sales. Yeah, flatback is 
being revamped. Less Wallaroos, 3000. That, that competition. Compact. No, that's just... No, Wallaroo, not Walmart. Yeah, that's, that's competition. Can we maybe make another Wallaroo? With the same trick that we did for the sedan, that we make an upscale version. Although we don't need to. Because we're selling more than them anyway, because theirs is worse. So that's probably, that would probably be overkill. So Emu is fine, sedan is sour. We need more... Need 4,000 base thalassines. And we need one, two, 3,000 track thalassines. So we're running out of production capacity. And we have some, uh, some in Sydney actually. Are probably not enough to move the kangaroo bee from from Brisbane to Sydney. Let's check. Kangaroo, and we're getting Melbourne in ten anyway, so five thousand three hundred. Nope, that's just for smaller smaller stuff. Okay, seven points, so it's probably similar to last year. Let's check in a while. Okay, more Thylacine Ts. Last Kangaroo B, Alexis. So, four, five. So that's basically the supercar if you want. 5,000 flatbacks. Eight thousand grand kangaroos. And four thousand wombats. New flat bag in four. So the others are better now. I think these are just experienced and the others have better engines. A Canadian or something with and Huanshi, we should beat them though. Our engine is better, and we are more experienced. Maybe they're just investing more. But let's just then simply use this as experience gathering. And then set things, set, set the sliders accordingly. So focus on development. And we can reduce team growth and target a bit of large teams. What's the competition in the Grand Turning series? So we have our 300 horsepower. There are a couple big V8s, V10s, but a number where we should have some some chance. We have a nice acceleration from 0 to 100. So we should be in a good midfield there, maybe.
I'm using the first few years as experience gathering and then I go to town once I have revamped the engine and the cars accordingly. Okay, so our sports car sells extremely well. Less emus, 7,000. 7, okay, and the A's in Perth, but that's okay. So, 7,000 emus. Plenty of lines available in Sydney, but again, we're at. they are getting old now. And it's our next thing on the list, a new long wheelbase platform. Some less kangaroo bees. Not the base version. That'd be a bit more radical. So pickup truck can be sunsetted next time around. Increased demand for roadster in Australia. Hmm. Okay, whatever. So, 3,000 and 3,700 thylacines. Kangaroo B is great, Emu is great, Wallaroo is great, Base Kangaroo is great, Flatback is great. We're selling off our reserves, that's awesome. So I can sunset the Flatback, and that basically means producing a thousand. Zero victories and 27 points, that's nice. So Flatback B is finished. We sold all of them. Everything else looks stable. It does. So then let's put the new Flatback into production. And on the market. So we have 4509. But the price doesn't really matter, it's better. I think we're probably too too cheap with a couple of cars. But we're having excellent cash position, so it's simply a good defensive uh, approach, I think. And I might have a closer look at uh, sales prices for all future new models. I'm not going to do this now mid midstream. So production. So this was 5,000, so maybe 8,000. So we are back to normal. So something like this, stop production of the old one. So we had good results last time around. We're still lost, but now with much better results. What does the press say about the new flatback? On paper, the Australia's flatback beat seems to check off most of the list of stuff that has to go into a good selling vehicle. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. And it's not that where we're going, that's true. 
So, it's sluggish for a pickup truck, but it does what it has to do, 107 horsepower, so that's something to take into account then for uh, the new... Uh, the new generation of flatbacks torque is borderline respectable the design is as powerful as they like corner wise it's um, a death trap it's just waiting to kill you so that they don't like uh, the handling it's not comfortable it's better than most vehicles in terms of space it's a well-built machine it's dependable it's great fuel consumption, so we can have a bigger engine with more power and more fuel use. That's okay. So it's all right, I guess. So we have our compact car in the works and rally car, for that matter. Have we actually seen the results of the other racing series? So in the hasn't started. Why hasn't it started? That's weird. Race is five. It has competition. Competition has experience. We have experience. Maybe the races are later in the year. Five races? They have to they have to hurry about that. Yep, so here we're going to get our new car soon. Not that not that soon in ten months, but still reasonably soon. Question is so our big team is is working? Next big thing on our list is going to be the revamp of the long wheelbase stuff. Can put a f um, phase out the old uh, Thalassine chassis. So from 1959, so it's now 11 years old. So we're a bit early, but that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, the Thalassine stuff can, can go. That we don't have this clutter anymore. I think the engine also. I don't think we put it anywhere else. No, we didn't. Do we put the gearbox somewhere else? Nope. That was just a complete one-off. Was it profitable at least? So the 1957 Thalassine Oh yes, 250 million profit, so that was definitely worth investing uh, its own platform. And the new one is actually slower to 100, funny enough. Why is that? It's heavier, not much. It's more powerful. Yeah, sometimes I'm not sure where these values come from. Probably gearbox setting or something. But the new track version, therefore... Com uh, is in a league of its own and I'm curious how to see uh, how it is in the race but that's all then something for the next episode so things are now a bit more interesting again with competition and with our racing activities.